Anaktuvik Pass, in the mountains 220 miles north of Fairbanks, Alaska, is the last stronghold of the Nunamute Eskimos, who even today depend on caribou herds for their sustenance. For the Nunamute people, the airport is everything. They walk there. Everything else must come by air. The runway is a lifeline to the outside world. Diesel fuel brought by an Everts Air tanker once owned by Howard Hughes is used to keep the town generator running. The air temperature is minus 38 Fahrenheit, while wind chill temperatures are 60 to 63 below. The temperature freezes a transfer pump, so the crew must install a backup pump quickly before the aircraft engines become too cold to start. Village Mayor George Paniak, son of village founder Simon Paniak, talks about preserving the history of the Nunamute people and learning to fly. Are the children forgetting the Inupiaq language? Uh, yeah, kind of, yes. Lower 30, someplace around there, they're having problems now already. And that's really, really sad. When I was a little kid, I was playing with a toy airplane. And one day I blurted it out, just, I'm going to learn how to fly. And my two older brothers, they were mocking me. Oh, you'll never learn how to fly, you know. I never, but it stuck on me. I never did forget that. On my senior year, just before I graduated, two months I did, before I graduated, I successfully uh, passed my written uh, check ride with the instructors and everything. And I, I obviously got my private license. Cargo planes brought in the entire school building, board by board. It now houses 100 students. There, award-winning language teacher Rachel Riley makes sure the children say the Pledge of Allegiance in their native tongue. This aircraft wouldn't start after sitting on the ramp only 20 or 30 minutes. Although there are five people within three feet of the camera microphone, they aren't saying much as they realize they aren't leaving. Yeah, don't have much battery left. All they could do was watch the caribou on the nearby hillside. Mechanics from Fairbanks arrived three hours later and were greeted by a caribou herd on the runway. The passengers made it back to Fairbanks shortly after midnight with a new appreciation for harsh conditions faced by the Nunamute people.